Call me Nostradamus, because Holiday didn't even have a chance to grab his suitcase from the luggage claim in the Portland airport. There's a bit to break apart here, so let's put it into the GPS as we just missed the exit. As per Wadge, and I don't believe it's technically official yet, Drew Holiday is on his way to Boston. In exchange for one of the better two-way veteran point guards out there, the Trailblazers will be acquiring Robert Williams and Malcolm Brogdon, plus the 2024 first-round pick from the Golden State Warriors and the 29 pick from the Celtics. We're going to take a look about what changed, and I'm going to give my grades on these trades, and then we'll talk about what happens for fantasy. As we can see, for the Celtics, it's going to be Holiday, Brown, Tatum, Porzingis, and Horford going to be starting. And for the Trailblazers, Yahoo has Brogdon, Simons, Sharp, Grant, and Aiton starting. However, as per Watch, he stated that the Trailblazers are going to be putting their young guys forward. So I look for Brogdon to be shopped around and then put on the bench. So it's going to be Scoot Henderson, Simons, Sharp, Grant, and Aiton all starting for the Trailblazers as of right now. For the Celtics, they continue to get stronger. Brogdon was unhappy anyway, and I and I can't see the Eastern Conference Finals being anything but Boston versus Milwaukee, barring any injuries. A negative is that Williams was a solid, tough big man, and I felt he fit into that rotation quite well. That being said, I give this trade a solid A-. Now for the Trailblazers, they moved Holiday, who was not worth keeping for them. They get to play their young guys. They got two more first round picks. The downside is that they need to now move Brogdon and Graham. That being said, I give this trade a solid A for the Trailblazers. Moving on to fantasy, there's a lot going on, so let's start with who's going to be improving. I think this mostly is going to be helping out Simons. He was at the bottom of my top 25 in the C plus tier, being selected around 86th in the 7th round-ish. Now I'd put him solidly at B. I expect him to start going earlier in drafts, like maybe 60 or a little bit higher, at least going around the 5th round. Scoot Henderson is going to be benefiting from this. If he starts at point guard, he will likely be allowed to go through all the pains that they do for a rookie, in a draft I did recently, his name popped up going around the 90 to 100th pick. I expect him to get picked closer to like the 70s now at this point, or at least around 8th or 9th round. Now I'm normally not a fan of going after rookies for fantasy, but he may be worth a look for me around the 10th round. Sharp also benefits from this. He's been getting selected around 146th, which is about 13th round value. I believe this may push him closer to like 11th or 12th round value. I don't think he's really on my radar as there are better options out there. The one Celtic I see this actually helping is Horford. Now he's been getting selected around 163rd, which is out of the normal 12 team draft. I think this boosts him a little bit to a point where now I'm going to take a look at him around the 12th or 13th round, plus he also plays power forward center. I think this technically hurts Aiden, but I put him as neutral since I had him initially greatly improved after the Lillard trade. At first, I figured him to get about 20 and 12 this season. But now I expect him to average around 17 and 10 at this point. He's been getting selected around the 53rd pick. I'd give him a look around there, possibly at the end of the 4th round. I think this mostly hurts Grant. With this move, it's clear the Trailblazers are going to be going young. Grant is in his prime, which is why I think he'll end up being moved. As of now, Grant will be the starting power forward and Aiton will be the starting center. I think Robert Williams also gets hurt by this. He's been getting selected around the 12th or 13th round for a while. He and Aiton are big men who can't shoot threes, so that's why Williams isn't going to be the power forward. Williams was able to get away with that because on the Celtics, there was a great rotation with power forward center between him, Horford, Tatum, Grant Williams. Robert Williams was getting about 24 minutes per game and 30 minutes per game the season before that. Now, I don't see him getting more than 20. I would avoid Williams for fantasy at this point. I think Drew Holiday takes a hit with this. I initially had him at B-plus tier, and he was getting selected around the 50th pick. I expect him to be closer to 67 at this point. If he's available there, I might take a look at him. I also don't think Brogdon is going to get much love in Portland. Unfortunately, I don't know where he's going to end up getting traded to, but he'll likely fall out of fantasy leagues. He may be worth grabbing around the 12th or 13th rounds, but I think there are better options out there. Now, I still think Tatum is worth the first round selection for fantasy, but he's no longer a must-have guy as a top 5 pick for me. Brown was initially going around 26th pick, but I think he'll now end up towards the end of the third round. Porzingis has been getting picked around 55th or the 5th round. I think he'll still end up being around here or maybe the 6th round, but I always tend to avoid him because he's made of glass. Now a guy I'm not too sure about is Derek White. Originally he was supposed to be the starting point guard, but he's now the backup. I do think however that the Celtics are going to find a way to give him 24 to 28 minutes per game. He's been getting selected around 86th in Yahoo. I would not get him there at this point, but I do see him continuing to go there around that time. I think he's actually worth being closer to around 11th or 13th round. So that's it for this trade breakdown. Hopefully this helps you with your fantasy picks and your drafts, and let me know what you think.